What's up? It's MJX. And just Wavy J. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to, to Chasing, Chasing Dreams, Dreams with Amy J. Welcome to Chasing Dreams Podcast with Amy J. Amy believes that realizing a life without regrets is achieved by taking chances, chasing your dreams, making moves, and overcoming your doubts. The Chasing Dreams Podcast will help you overcome life's obstacles, believe in your potential, and inspire you to face your fears. And now here's the woman who is passionately pursuing her dreams, Amy J. Chasers, this is Amy J, and you are listening to Chasing Dreams, episode number 90. That's right, folks. We are 10 away from three digits, which is crazy. And to kind of kickstart these awesome 10 episodes, I've got a cool musical pair here. I have MJ and Josh, who go by MJX Music, and they are two friends that met freshman year of high school. They went to the same college studying computer information systems, and now work at one of the top consulting companies in the world. Through all of this success, something about it felt average to them. MJ has always had a passion for making music, in particular rapping. And Josh has always had a a passion for making videos. They are now trying to escape the nine to five life and live a life chasing their dreams every day. And they even have a song called We're Dreaming, uh, which I caught the other day, which is awesome. And guys, welcome to the show, MJ, Josh. Uh, for, before we begin, maybe you guys should kind of identify your voices for the people. <laughs> yeah, what's going on, guys? So this is MJX. I- I'll call myself the rapper of the duo. And this is Just Wavy J, the videographer and uh, person behind the lens. Yeah, and Amy, that was a, a great description of us uh, working a nine-to-five life and trying to get out of it slowly. I mean, yeah. you, literally, both of you guys did a music video. And guys, the link to that and all the things we talk about are going to be on the show notes page. So, uh Chasing Dreams, epi- Chasing Dreams HQ.com slash episode 90. You get that at the end, but you can see the video there too. I'm going to link it and embed it in if I can. Awesome video. I loved it. I loved it. Was Appreciate there any reason for that song? Um, for the song in general, it was really just like, I don't know. We both were fresh out of college. Uh, we were both thinking about, oh, it's awesome. We're at one of the best consulting firms in the world. But for some reason, there was something that there was a little like peace inside of both of us. So it was just like, there's something more like, what are we going to do every single day? Oh, wait, we're dreaming. You know, like we're taking we're taking shots, we're taking chances. And at the end of the day, like as long as you have your team with you, there's no way you can fail. And that's just kind of like the idea behind the song. Yeah. And, and it's really interesting um, that that song in particular, we we got off work and had to record right after work and kind of uh it's funny what the behind the scenes look like how we just drove to our location for the day you know jumped out the car changed clothes like got the camera all ready and kind of had to hustle to get it done in our allotted time frame of what like 25 30 minutes of recording because with the full-time job and outside responsibilities there's so much else going on so we had to record it like 30 minutes and then go do our other stuff that we have responsibilities with and, you know, edit it late at night just to get it out by like the weekend time frame. Yep. But uh, it's crazy. I, I would not have known that if you hadn't said it because it's so well done. And I'm not, was that done in one take? Yeah. So the typically how it works is uh, so we have a, a seven day week with all of these Sunday sessions and Monday through Friday is when we'll talk about what the next song is going to be. Maybe that's Monday, driving to work. And then um, Tuesday, Wednesday is me writing and recording the song. And typically this is going to take place around like 10 or 11 p.m. and will last until 2 a.m. Because being a full-time consultant, we're working from 8 a.m. to 6 or 7 p.m. So we only have a few hours left in the day. And then Friday or Saturday, me and Josh are just going around trying to find a location of where to record. And then we'll try to get it all in one take, you know, get all the lyrics out, get the words right. Josh, make sure he holds the camera as steady as possible and get some cool shots. Um, but it's typically how it goes. Yeah, the, the one take the one take style is kind of something that we've seen online before. And it really works for us because we really believe in the power of like a video and online and kind of getting that to grab people's attention. But in order to create a full music video with different locations and, and, you know, something that can like cut back and forth really 
really in an interesting way that takes so much time and planning. So we kind of go with the one take style and we try to add effects to the one take and cool camera movement because just doing it in one take allows for a much quicker recording process than it would if we were going to different locations. So we try to do most of our stuff in one take because it's simple and efficient, which is like the consultant in, in us. Yeah. But uh, it also really gets the job done. And if we can if we can do it in the right way it, with the right effects, then it's still attention grabbing. Yeah. And, and also to add to that, something Josh said about the one take. So to me, there's two ways to make a video. Mm-hmm. You can either do all of the work beforehand and make a really good one take when the, with the recording. And that way you're editing so much easier. Or you can break up the video in so many different kind of shots and then try to mash it up later. And that's just a lot more work on the editing side. So we really go back and forth what we do. The last Sunday session we put out, you know, we had like 10 to 15 different shots. But it was cool because Josh had a drone flying in the air, made the sky flash different colors and stuff. Um, But yeah, Amy, we'll definitely link you with that that video as well. So hopefully some viewers can watch that. That'd be awesome. Now, Josh, speaking of that, while he's writing the, the lyrics and putting work in for that, are you at the same time kind of planning out, like he said, doing the work behind the scenes up front? Yeah, yeah. So it's really interesting how both of our both of our workflows happen um, in different steps. So I'd say while MJ is writing that song between, let's say it's Monday between Monday and Friday, and he's he records maybe Friday night and co- and Friday nights his night in uh, on the weekend to make sure the song is completely done. Um, I'm not doing as much planning on that Monday through Friday end, but then from like Friday through Sunday. So Friday will, is where I'll start planning. Saturday night is usually my night that I have to like stay in and knock out the edit because we put it out every Sunday night. So we kind of switch off the, the weekend nights that are, are music focused because I have to edit. And once we record, you know, MJ's kind of done with that process and it's up to me to finish it. So we're both very responsible as far as I'm counting on him to finish a song by Friday and he's counting on me to finish the music video by Sunday afternoon. So um, that's kind of when my focus comes in. Yeah. And and something else to add to that, um, I think Monday is kind of like our break day from the entire process just because Sunday we're pushing the video hard. You know, we're commenting or responding to like everyone who shared the video, which has been like pretty overwhelming recently. We get about 30 shares per video from not even just friends anymore, which is pretty cool. It's your Um, recovery day. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. You really need the brain break. And also like you're coming off the high of putting out something and, and getting excited about it again every Sunday night and getting really positive feedback. And I, I know for both of us just in the last couple weeks, and we've been doing this for about two months consistently now, where we've been doing this for a little longer than that, but two months consistently every week. And now we're just starting to get messages from people, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook. I mean, I'm on my phone right now, and I just got this Instagram message the other day from someone who I don't know. And he said, hey, like, hey, man, this is some great music. Where can I hear some more? And I, you know, directed him to the MJX Facebook page and YouTube channel. And it's just crazy that someone... um Someone said something and his last message to me was, thanks for the good music. And mm. I was like, can't, can't believe that one person. You guys person- have had that impact. Yeah. Honestly, I, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I, I, awesome. haven't, I haven't actually told MJ <laughs> that yet. So That's funny. Um, but that was really cool. And it just if we can get one person every week that appreciates it and, uh, and, and hears it that hasn't heard it before, like that's success in our eyes. So. Oh, oh, yeah. And like g- going back to what we were talking about earlier with the, that one day we have off. So t- to us, it's like it really is a no days off kind of seven day week where even on Monday, as we're enjoying like the one day where we're not focusing on music or video, we're riding to work. So it's about an hour commute for us to get to D.C. That's where we normally work at. Um, and we're talking about just music in general. So ha- on our day off, we end up birthing the new idea for the next Sunday session. So we're talking about like the idea of the new song. And before we know it, we're like, oh, shoot, like, dude. That's it. That's the song we're going to do. And it's just funny because like that's that's never planned. So it's not even like that you guys have a day off because you're still on in the sense of of doing stuff. Now, let's rewind it back, though, a little bit, because you guys have known each other what seems like a pretty long time. Right. And you guys have been friends and you're still you're working together. How do you have that conversation of, hey, I it's not that I hate my job, but something seems like I'm not doing everything I can. 
Like, how did that conversation even come up? Did you guys have the epiphany at the same time or what? Yeah, it's a it's an interesting question. And I mean, we definitely don't hate our job. But the way I describe it is I, I think we're both very blessed and we have great jobs and we enjoy it. But it's not where we get our happiness and our energy from. So it's like getting it's the outside activities and music that the real happiness and the day to day comes from. Um, and but that first conversation where we started talking about this happened on a very specific night. And I think you'd agree with me, MJ. It was when we were both seniors in, uh, mm. at JMU and we, we both Worked studied, uh, right? yeah, we, we were both computer information systems majors and we, uh, were in this thing called ca- our capstone class and long story short, building a really complex computer program. And it was our whole focus of the entire last semester of school. And it was like 1am on maybe a Wednesday or Tuesday night. And instead of going home after we were leaving the library at 1am, like we just needed that break from continuous work to sleep to work. And we hit a bar downtown Harrisonburg at 1am to grab a beer before we before we called it a night. And we were at the bar, uh, both of us just having one beer. And it's when we kind of started talking about this, like, why are we why are we focusing so much energy on this capstone? I mean, it was because it was important to us and we like to do well in everything we, we put our minds to. Mm-hmm. And just, I think MJ said like, what if we put the same amount of energy into music? Like what if we, we, we've proven that for an entire semester, like we can work until 1 a.m., get up at 7 a.m. the next day, continue to do, do it again. And I mean, we were, we were in one of the finalists of our whole entire major for our capstone project. So like we proved that the hard work can lead to good results. And I think that that was kind of when the uh, idea of pushing this harder was born. Yeah, and, and it was cool just because, like, I think at school, we went to James Madison University, best school on the planet. Uh, but at school, at, at school, we were, uh, <laughs> like Josh was saying, blessed with the opportunity to be in a great major. But I think it, w- it was cool because um, I think at school, Josh and I, like, knew an okay amount of people and just had a lot of support from our friends. And one day, like, as we were having this conversation – we were like, you know what? Like, let's just make a song about our school. So we decided to make this thing called the JMU anthem, and we were like, we're not gonna sure what's, we're not really sure what's gonna happen with this video, but we're just really just gonna put it out and like see what kind of reaction we can get. And it was so funny because like we're working on the music, you know, like I'm writing it at like 2 a.m. Like jo- I didn't have a car at school, so Josh is driving me over to our producer's house, and we're working on the beat, working on getting the vocals down. And then as we're recording the video, we get so many weird looks from people like, what the heck are these guys doing? Like, we're literally recording a rap video in our school library, like on our school's quad, just all over the place in our college of business. And like everyone was giving us strange looks. But the coolest part was we put this video out. And within the first two weeks, we get like over 12,000 views. Uh, Our video ended up playing at our school's graduation. Oh, that's awesome. Which is one of the coolest things. But like that to me is just so beautiful because – you always see the ugly, like it, it, people never get to see the ugly behind the scenes. But when they do, they're just like, oh, what, what are you guys even doing? Yeah. This is so strange. But yeah. when you see the, the byproduct of, I don't know, this ugly like process, it turns into this thing where it's like, wow, like that yeah. is something that can be inspirational. You and, know? and I'll add on to that. And it's really funny to see how like the music and the videos bleed into everything we do in life. Because after we started full time work in August and we put this video out in what was it, April or May, Um, we had gotten an email from someone, one of the top people at our firm, uh, like he's one of the top like 80 partners, and he he knew us from the JMU video Mm -hmm. because he had seen it because he was a JMU alum himself. Yeah. And so it's really interesting to see how like even at work, people, our, our reputation through videos and music can kind of precede us. And it's like a great introduction and a way to gain exposure, not just in our personal lives, but in our professional lives as well. Well, that's mm. interesting that you say that. So did you ever worry about the ramifications of doing this on the side versus that? That's actually kind of funny because like, I'm hoping no one at work, work ever hears this <laughs> podcast, but J- Josh and I will literally be at work. And like during our lunch break, we don't really go for walks to Chipotle. I mean, we do occasionally, but um, when we, when we have our lunch breaks, we're, we're going up to a different room Josh pulls out the camera and we start just recording a video, start vlogging, start thinking of like new song ideas, which is just kind of funny because we post these videos online later during the day. And like we recently had like a higher up at our company be like, oh, so this is what you guys are doing at work all the time. (laughs) I I think like it's not something that we worry about too much because at the end of the day, we know like you 
you got to, and this is for everyone who has, you know, something on the side, you can't let the side thing distract you from the thing that really is your, your main, your main thing. And, uh, we watched a podcast MJ and I recently with logic and Gary V and logic's a rapper. And I'm sure, you know, Gary V, um, and logic said for anyone who thinks, you know, they can just quit their, their job and chase their dream. Like that's ridiculous. He's like, I worked two jobs while chasing my rap dream. And I did rap from like midnight to 3 a.m. And so we just definitely, we focus on making sure that our work is, you know, 100%. But, um, and as long as everything we do at work is good and, and you're not, you're not taking slacking or I don't know how to put it right, right? Like as long as you're not doing yeah. a bad job, yeah. then it doesn't matter what else you do after work. Yeah, you know? and, and to add on to that, like that was something that I was struggling with recently, maybe like a couple months ago, because I would be so far focused on the technology consulting job part of my life that the, the music took a toll. And then the opposite started happening. I was so focused on my music that the consulting life started to take a toll. But I, I've recently just had so many conversations with people and listening to podcasts that make me realize, and this is just something I want everyone to hear, it is possible for you to give 100% to multiple things. You don't need to focus so hard on your side hustle or your main job that you're taking away from each other. Just make sure you have that balance because it is possible to find the balance. But the second you realize one is starting to lack more than the other, start to reevaluate, reassess your situation and think, okay, how can I make sure I'm putting 100% into both of these side hustles? Yeah. And and that, that to add on to that, like that, that balance – like balance is sometimes a word that can be used that you think is um, – balance sounds easy and relaxed. But like the balance is actually a lot of work in itself because what MJ is really saying is like give 100% to work. And then when it's music time, give 100% to music. And like that's why, that's why we got up today early on a Saturday morning to like you know do a podcast and talk about these ideas. And the second – actually after this podcast ends at – I guess I don't know if the viewers know what time we're doing this in the morning. It's like 9.30. We started at 9.30 this morning. Right after this ends, we're recording our video for tomorrow on like to continue the Saturday mm -hmm. grind. So it's like that balance is actually full of work and like commitment and choices. And it just figure out what you're passionate about. And then if you want to do it, like give it everything you have because if you're not going to. Yeah. It's just – and. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and to add to that, yeah, so it's 9.30 in the morning, but what's cool is Josh actually got me this necklace recently, and it, it, it's it's pretty much an X, what's it called, an intersect necklace? It's technically called an intersect, but it looks like an X. Yeah, so this is kind of like where the X from MJX even like stems from. Every song, a new meaning comes up, and the, the idea of the X to me is, I don't know, for me, like me and Josh are like two sides, right, or whoever you're working with, we're two equals, and at times in life, you know, one of us are going to be doing big things, but we're always together. You know, we're always balancing out each other and not only with each other, but with work. You know, it's always a balance. Sometimes work's going to take uh, a lead and sometimes music is going to take a lead. But it's all about finding that balance. Um, and that's part of what the X is in MJX, which I, I really enjoy as I'm finding new meanings with every song. What I love about the fact that you said that is a lot of people don't realize that, you know, the moment there's an imbalance in one dream versus what life is taking upon them, whether it's work and personal or two personals or, you know, whatever combination it is, they immediately give up. And the fact that you're, you're saying what it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, if I'm saying it wrong, is things can go out of balance as long as you work to rebalance yourself. You know? mm, absolutely. Right? Amy, I'm going to have to send you a picture of the necklace because it, it really is like the perfect, like, symbol of that description it really is and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up yeah yeah definitely send it i want to link to it because i'm curious to how it looks i mean the thing is with life and the way you guys are, are doing things you're finding time to do this stuff right but how how are the is are the rest of your responsibilities amongst that because while we're talking only side hustle and real job you technically have a third portion which is you know a life Personal life, yeah. yeah. Does that suffer? <laughs> yeah. So, I um, while we're talking right now, I actually I coach a youth basketball team, and it's just one of the things that I do because I love it, and and it's my way of kind of giving back in a way and having. I'm fun. sorry. Of course you and, do. <laughs> and and we have a basketball game that starts in 15 <laughs> minutes, actually. But I have an assistant coach, so I was like, hey man, like today. I need your help to back me up because I got too many overlapping commitments right now and, and I can't choose between all of them. Wow. Um, but I mean, we both have, whether it's, you know, relationships and a dating life and, and friends. And it's crazy because there's only so many days a week 
that I can commit to seeing a friend. And it, it sounds, and that can sound interesting, but like if Monday through Friday, I can't do happy hour every day with different people. You know, you, I can kind of commit to one day a week with someone sure. and that's me making a personal, almost more selfish decision and saying, Hey, I can't give all of me to all of you because I got to give more of me to me. Um, and yeah, and- no, go ahead, Amy. Well, just real quick. The, the only reason I chuckle at the fact that Josh is also uh, coaching youth basketball is I find that dreamers end up doing more things than just what they chase. And mm. and that's that's the great thing. I'm sure MJ, uh, MJ has more stuff as well, probably. So, uh, Amy, what I actually was going to say, like the, the perfect way for me to respond to that question about responsibilities, mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to do this entire thing. But I have a couple of lines in a song that I was writing recently. I haven't released it yet, but I just want to like say it out loud to kind of just explain what it's like to balance responsibilities. Yeah, so, please. Um, yeah, I'll, go I'll, I'll go ahead right now. So single mother who can barely walk. I swear I want to change her life. She's given me the chance to take the world so I know when I get it, I'm going to hold it tight. Rapping is my dream, but it isn't my reality. I had to get a job so I can take care of my family. Do I really think that I can do this life forever? Maybe I don't know, but I'm praying it gets better. Paying for these bills while my friends just do whatever. I'm jealous of their lives. They don't carry all the stressors. 23 now and I'm the man of the house. Responsibilities are great, but all I'm asking is how. Working 40-hour weeks and suiting up every day. Hit the studio at night. I'm trying to blow them away. I'm trying to follow my dreams and now I'm chasing it down my vision is getting blurry but i'm flooring it now uh, that's awesome yes yeah, so, so really the idea behind that is, um, <laughs> wait hold on i gotta clap that up <laughs> <laughs> thanks amy yeah that, this song hopefully will be released soon. song released soon you Check guys see out. a sneak peek 10 yeah yeah honestly but yeah so <laughs> re- really the idea behind that is um yeah so like i've got a single mother right now um you know living with just my sister and my mom like love them both to death it does get very stressful because one of the ideas of um, one of the perks of having a um, a nice job is the, the salary, you know, and, and it, is, it is really nice to have it. But a lot of my money and time has to go back to paying rent for my apartment, taking my family out to dinner once in a while, which is always great. Sure. I've got an awesome girlfriend that I get to see at least once a week, but it can be rough sometimes, you know, because I have to tell her like, hey, I've got to focus on music tonight. And it's a hard conversation to have because when you talk about this idea of chasing dreams, it's so ridiculous. Hey, we got a perfect example oh, yeah. of um, someone someone at work asked us to uh, play in their kickball league, yeah. and which is something that a normal young adult would love to do, make friends within the company and whatnot. And a couple weeks ago, MJ had to tell him he couldn't make the game. <laughs> yeah, I was telling about that. It, it was just so funny because like um, I, we're literally at work and like it's always this awkward conversation trying to get out of after work activities. Mm-hmm. But we signed up for this kickball league. Uh, worth 70 bucks we ever spent, honestly. But um, so he asked us like, hey, are you going to be at the game? And I go, uh, I, I've got a personal project I'm going to work on tonight. And normally people like will leave it at that. But he's like, well, what's your personal project? And I was like, um, oh, wow. I, I've got a, much. I know, seriously. I was like, uh, I'm going to make a rap song tonight. And he was like, what the heck? So it, to me, like, if your dreams aren't big enough that people are saying, like, what or laughing at it, like, maybe you need to reevaluate. Or maybe your dream is so cool that it is realistic. But um, that's just yeah. kind of the idea behind it. It can be kind of funny sometimes. Yeah. And I'll, I'll also add one more thing to add. go back to that original question of um, the things we do outside of just the dream and mm-hmm. the work and stuff. And it's my – it's my – lock screen on my phone right now it says 7 p.m till 2 a.m and like that's that that's your second chunk of hours in the day when you get off of work and it's just like that time allotment every day is there for you to do whatever you want and i really i really believe actually that we all have the time in our days that we can commit to something whatever it is whether it's if if all you want to do is coach basketball or if all you wanted to do is paint or hang out with friends you have that time to do so, and how many hours is that a year? Yeah, so well, I was gonna, based on what Josh was saying, mm-hmm. I just really, real quick calculated on my calendar. This is the consulting side coming out. So four hours per day, 365 days in one year, that's 1,460 1, hours that you can be working on a side hustle. That's not taking away from your eight hour workday and that one hour dinner you go to with some friends. That's still the four hours from eight to 11 PM that you could be working, which adds up to 1,460 hours. Like what are we even doing with that time? Watching yeah. Netflix, you know, like what's yeah. going on? So jumping on that real quick, that ends up being like, if you divide that by 24 for hours in a day, that's like 60 days. Yeah, I mean, you're doing math yourself. 60 days of extra work. That's literally two months. 
Like, what could you do if you're working on one thing in two full mo- time for two months? In two months, we've been able to, two months part time, we've been able to generate almost a thousand likes on our Facebook page, mm-hmm. you know, like hundreds of shares on our videos, thousands of views, and it's both led to new and cool opportunities. MJ, like, we're doing this podcast with you because of two months of work has gotten the word out and, and spread in some way. And on from a, my video perspective, I'm now working with other artists and getting cool opportunities out of that myself. So like two months of part-time work led to that. Just imagine what a year is going to do. And mm-hmm. the thing is, and congratulations, by the way, because I checked this morning, you guys are at 1,001 subscribers on your YouTube yeah. channel. So <laughs> yeah, that's a big milestone. That's, that's huge. Milestone. Congrats on that. Yeah. And, and another thing, uh, just to add to that, Amy, so we're, we're really about like supporting the fans who support us. So once our Facebook page hits a thousand likes, we'll have over a thousand followers on Instagram, over a thousand subscribers on YouTube and a thousand likes on Facebook. So it's kind of like the, the Trinity of our social media platforms. Um, we're going to do a like for a rap, which pretty much means every person who likes the status posted by MJX will get a wrap on their Facebook wall personalized for them. Even if we don't know them, we're going to have to make it work. You heard it here first. Wow, <laughs> yeah, that, that's first. a lot. So, so we're committing to this as of today because I just said it out loud. <laughs> you guys but, hear that? You need to go to the Facebook page. <laughs> go yeah, to the Facebook page I like. Yeah. It was back in, um, back in senior year of college. I was just like sitting at home one night and on Facebook, I just put on my status, like for a truth is, just as a, almost as a joke because this was something in high school. If you liked it, you would put something on their Facebook wall. Hey, you're really cute. You're funny. Something like that. So people started liking it because it, they thought it was like a throwback joke. And then I put up really, really personal uh, messages on their walls in public and like something that I had heard about them or, or noticed or appreciated. And like that kind of support and like positivity and love and like vulnerability blew people away. And it got like really huge. And um, I. I ended up giving out over like a hundred really personal messages. It was I kept a word doc. It was like twenty pages of personal messages. Wow! To people. And like that kind of that kind of outreach really like resonated with people. So we kind of thought that this would be a really cool way to give that a little twist um, with the music and still do something different. Mm-hmm. I think that's great. I mean, there's something about the intimacy of that that kind of brings people together. You know, in a world where everything is likes and statuses and broad messages that we give to give that kind of time and attention to individuals Mm -hmm. is is huge. I mean, that's what you're doing with your music and you guys, uh, you know, Josh, you had that example earlier about um, the person who who found you guys and was liking your status and stuff. Do you find that your interactions have influenced your music? Have you been inspired by some of the things that you have seen or heard with your interactions with your fans? Uh, oh, yeah. It, it's just been crazy because like I, this this music process has actually been much longer than the last couple of months. And that's what a lot of people don't know. Like, for example, I've been making music on YouTube since I was a freshman in high school and I'm now graduated from college. So that was a long time ago. But it's just so crazy because I go back and reflect on some of those comments once in a while. And like I literally see comments of like in a couple of years, this guy is going to be famous, you know, or like it's crazy like how much your words have impacted my life and one of the craziest thing is josh and i got a message recently about one of our recent songs and this kid goes like i listen to your music when i go to the bus stop every day and it's like what the heck and josh asked him what his favorite song was and it was a video that we were really proud of and a song that we we're really proud of too so it's cool to see like random people that we don't even know listen to our music on a regular basis yeah. and like i don't know i think and, that nothing nothing can beat that yeah and something that i do a lot when people message me when they say they like it, I don't just say like, hey, thanks. I also say, I'm really curious, what was it about that video that you really liked? Because I want to know to kind of make sure I'm kind of incorporating that kind of stuff in the future. Sure. And it's always, it always seems to be the new editing technique I learned, the new effect that we threw in there. And so it pushes me to work harder on the videos. And I kind of have a personal goal with every video is learn something new with every video you make. Mm-hmm. And like MJ does something different every song. Like he's, we're always adding those little skills because we only, I only have time to learn like one really cool editing technique maybe a week, but like that incremental growth is going to all, is going to all come together in maybe five weeks mm-hmm. or uh, two months. It's all going to like mash up. So those comments from fans and knowing what they really like about each video continues to push me to learn and add new skills to my repertoire. 
Now yeah. you guys are kind of learning on the job, so to speak. Oh, you, on the fly. Yeah. Right. We, on, on the fly. As you're doing yeah. this two months part time, do you have any plans or thoughts to, you know, taking some time going in the studio and, you know, knocking something out, putting an album out, you know, going onto iTunes, that kind of a thing. Yeah, and honestly, that's something that like we, me and Josh both need to sit down and kind of like reevaluate ourselves and think about what our entire goal is with all this. But for now, like we're really just enjoying like doing these Sunday sessions, getting better with every song and every video. And I think at the end of the day, yes, that is a goal that will hopefully happen in the near future. But I think that I don't know. Our, our goal right now is to continue to just keep pushing the Sunday sessions, keep putting our heart and passion into it. And at the end of the day, like if a following is built, that's great. And if not, we're still going to continue making this music and hopefully it can inspire others. So yeah. I think at so. the end of the day, maybe like, I don't know, it, once we hit, uh, like I said, over a thousand likes a couple of these platforms, it, it'll be interesting because like how do we think about continuing to do Sunday sessions while trying to produce a full album, you know, it's something yeah. we'll have to discuss. Some one of the people that I just personally look up to and and pay attention to their content online, and I mentioned him earlier, is Gary Vee. And one thing he said was, he said, "Stop strategizing and start doing." So for the first couple of months before we got into Sunday sessions, we kept strategizing, like, what do we put out singles and then an album in a couple months, or how do we do this? Do we do it this way or that way? At the end of the day, like that kind of strategizing because you never know what the right way to do it is. You never know when the right time to put it on Spotify is. Is That was slowing us down so much. So we said, forget all that. Song a week, that's it. Yep. And and we've kind of gotten very locked into this routine. So soon we're going to have to do a little bit of strategizing to see how we can add on to this routine. But it's not something we spend too much think, time thinking about yeah. because that we only have so much time in the day. We can't think about an album right now. Yeah, no, seriously. I'm like, <laughs> And like what Josh was saying, that that's a good point because like people think too much. You've just got to start doing, stop creating, and start documenting. And that yeah. that really is the key with our strategy at the moment. We have so many friends who are creative as well, and and I keep preaching this to them because I see people say like, oh, I wanted to start that blog, or and I don't know what a, or I don't know what to blog about. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you should just blog about not knowing what to blog about, and eventually that idea of what you really want to blog about will be figured out through the process. And watching that process through your blog is so interesting because how many other people don't know what to blog about? Mm -hmm. So like I just tell everyone, get out there, start doing it. Day one starts today, not after like two weeks of planning. Um, and that's kind of the way we believe in. It's day one or one day. And I'll add on to that. So MJ added oh, on. Oh, that was deep, by the way. <laughs> it's either day one or one day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the rap songs. It's one of our rap songs. <laughs> it's a good lyric then. And – um. I, uh, so MJ mentioned his necklace earlier and I got a necklace too. I'm wearing right now <laughs> and it's a, it's a drill bit. Um, it's gold. It's, it's kind of cool. I always, <laughs> I always wanted a necklace. Um, but so it's a drill bit and I thought that this was really interesting because, you know, a drill bit, when you put it onto an electric drill and you push the button, it goes and it whirls in a circle. Right. Um, but it doesn't do anything until you lean into the drill and apply some pressure. And only then is it going to like drill that hole and do that work. So this drill bit's like a reminder for me to uh, apply that pressure to myself um, and, and get after it. And I guess, I mean, this just goes back. This goes back to the question of, I honestly forgot the question, but it a hundred percent related in my head before I started talking about it. But um, just like, I guess it was going back to the doing and not strategizing. Like you got to apply the pressure and actually start doing the the goal or the vision or whatever you want to set out to do. Yep. Now guys, before we wrap up and I loved having you on here and the things you're doing, cause I mean, guys, you heard some of the, that sneak peek of the lyrics. I mean, it's a lot of very similar things that we could keep going on and on. And honestly, I could go on and on uh, about the different things. Like I want to talk about how, yeah, people are envious of their friends having a great time while we're working hard for chasing dreams and stuff like that. But mm. we won't. Because that means we can just have you come back, of course, <laughs> right? But uh, what we do try to do is, before we wrap up, is ask you guys, especially being professionals like you are, what is something that people can do today to chase their dreams that you would encourage them to do, an action item that they should do? I'm going to think about it for a second. <laughs> okay. If you know, you can go ahead. Okay. I'll take this one first. So the first thing that someone can do today to chase their dreams mm -hmm. is I'm going to say it's, it might be twofold. Oh, 
I want to say one thing is like write that down. Uh, I think accountability um, is is really important. Um, and I also say and this might be I don't know. So I'm biased because I got MJ sitting here right next to me. But I think something so important and that we were talking about recently as far as relationships go mm -hmm. is support and finding someone that will support you no matter what it is you're doing. So I think chasing your dream, you have to find one person who's going to support you because it's a lot to hold that kind of pressure on yourself. You know, whether it's just someone you can talk to um, about what you're doing or share your excitement and frustrations about. Um, so I'd say find someone that's going to support you on this path because by no means is anyone doing this on their own. Everyone's got support and someone um, backing them up, whether it's from like, I mean, I'm going to, me and MJ are a special example because I actually record for him and he raps for me, you know, but, but if it wasn't, if I wasn't the videographer, I'd still be that friend there supporting him and kind of pushing him and motivating him. And he has that as well. And I have that as well. So I'd say find a friend to support you. Huge, mm. huge. MJ, you good now? You got one? Yeah. I, so I, I unfortunately have two, but I'm going to try to, I will allow it. So thank you, Amy. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> there's two words to me that come to mind. What we were talking about earlier, start doing it now and have patience. Those are two things that you really need because just start doing it now. Like think about, think about what you want to do and just start doing it. Whether it's writing a blog, whether it's making a vlog, whether it's making an app startup company, whatever it may be, just start doing it today, whether it's creating a plan or uh, whatever. Yeah. Just start. And then number two is having patience because, oh my God, it is hard to do this. You know, like we'll put out a video sometimes and it'll get like five likes on it. It won't have any growth on the page. And it's like, what is going on? But it really is about patience because every single week or every single time you work on that dream, you're going to slowly get better. Like we talked about earlier, 1,460 hours in one year from four hours every day, you have to have patience to have all of those hours in one year. Um, so yeah, start doing it today and patience. I think are going to be really important because you're playing a long-term game at the end of the day. Something Gary V says, you're playing a long-term game. So short-term sacrifices for long-term will always be the correct equation to me. I love it. Both, well, I guess three pieces of great advice that you guys should be paying attention to if you're not listening, which you already are. So no worries there. <laughs> MJ, Josh, thank you guys so much for coming on the show, sharing your story. Guys, you have to check them out. Amazing songs, even more than just We're Dreaming, because that was awesome. I really did love that. <laughs> Thanks you guys, so much. You know, that's my favorite, but I'm biased. Check out the Facebook page, the Instagram, the YouTube. We put out all different types of content on all of them. Um, Facebook and YouTube is kind of where we release all our content. And Instagram is where we kind of get a lot more personal and some of our, like, captions and what we're really talking about behind the scenes. So. Yeah. Really appreciate being on the show and um, hope that someone took something away from what we have to say. Yeah, Amy, really appreciate it. And I uh, well, hope you can be on this again. It was a lot of fun talking to you today. It was today. a lot of fun. Guys, that was MJX bringing their knowledge, their experience, sneak peeks. It was awesome. I loved it. Amazing guys doing wonderful things. Check them out. You guys can find all the links to their social media, especially their YouTube. Subscribe, listen. Uh, definitely listen to We're Dreaming. I am, I'm not, I'm not, I'm serious. That was my favorite. So um, I am biased, but it's still my favorite. You should check it out. And you can find all of that on the show notes page over at chasingdreamshq.com slash episode 90. That's episode nine zero. And in the words of MJ, it's day one or one day. What's it going to be for you guys? All right. So until next time, guys, keep chasing. Thank you so much for listening to Chasing Dreams. Amy would love to connect with you and hear all about your pursuit of chasing your dreams. Connect with her on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram via at Chasing Dreams HQ. Or you can find Amy on Twitter at AmyJ21. That's A-I-M-E-E-J-2-1. Be sure to visit headquarters over at chasingdreamshq.com for more inspiration, motivation, and resources to help with your own dream chase. We hope you'll join Amy next week. And until then, keep chasing.